Five computer games where you get your chopper out. What was the mode of transport of choice in the 1980s? Well, fancy car like Knight Rider, but for many of us it was the helicopter as glamorised by shows such as Airwolf, Treasure Hunt and of course Interceptor. Yes, we all dreamed of zooming around the UK countryside in an Augusta 109 whilst trying to deprive yuppies of money. On the agenda, I want one of those. But how could you fulfil these fantasies on your home computer or console? Yes! We're going to look at five games where you can indeed indulge all of your chopper fantasies. And we're going to start off with Desert Strike, which is a game by Electronic Arts that originated on Sega Mega Drive. Slightly enhanced version for the Amiga with touched up graphics and extra sound effects. But we'll start with the Mega Drive version because that's where it all began. The full name of the game is Desert Strike Return to the Gulf, where you have to defeat an evil dictator. Come on, it's the early 90s, it's Saddam Hussein, isn't it? And you're in Iraq. The game features one of the first instances of 3D models being converted into 2D pixels. You have missions to undertake, and of course it owes a lot to Choplifter. But unlike Choplifter, it's a sandbox game because you can, in theory, tackle the missions in any way you want. On level one, you have to destroy the radar bases and then block the power stations before destroying the air bases. And like Choplifter, you have to rescue abandoned pilots and prisoners and take them back to base. It's an awful lot of fun and it's easy to get distracted by the fact you can just fly around anyway anywhere and do anything in any order you want but the easiest way is always to follow the mission briefing or you'll basically be blown out of the air by enemy missiles makes good use of the multiple buttons on the mega drives joypad and yes this game is available for other systems my tip as i mentioned earlier is the amiga version for the extra sound effects and enhanced graphics but where did desert strike come from well Clearly, it was inspired by Choplifter. And here's one of the original versions by Brunderbun Software running on the Atari XE. You fly your helicopter and you have to rescue pilots whilst evading... Not pilots as such, hostages, I suppose, um, whilst evading the enemy. And they've got tanks and planes. There's some, there's some hostages and people running around. You have to pick them up and land and take them back to base whilst avoiding getting blown up by the enemy tanks. And this is the Atari version you're probably more familiar with because this is the later updated version after the game came out in the arcade. The original it was a home system game, came out in the arcade, then there were new ports for some of the systems. So you've got some additional polish with this, I think it's 1988 cartridge version from Atari. Looks far nicer, but the gameplay is essentially the same. C64 version. And it plays pretty much the same. Nice and speedy. Background doesn't move, which is a shame. The stars. Delivering some hostages or people rescued back to base. And your base is very close to the enemy area. area. But the top home version is the Sega Master System version, despite some severe sprite flickering it's a good port of the updated arcade version slightly tuneless music going on in the background reminds me of um well so many Sega Master System games really but it's so much more polished look how lovely it is and all the parallax scrolling going on Quite an old game by the time this came out on the Mars system. Indeed, quite an old game by the time it came out in the arcade, but um, good fun. It's rock hard, though, on this system. Uh, I wouldn't suggest it's the place you start. I'd su I suggest the place you start would be the updated Atari 8-bit version, and then uh, perhaps move on to this, because you will die lots of times. 
But hey, what if you want to fly an actual helicopter? Well, in the simulation, Tomahawk is the game for you. There's versions for the C64 Spectrum, Atari 8-bit, Amstrad PCW, and the CPC. But we're going to be looking at the CPC version. So by digital integration, they get a menu with lots and lots of options, including crosswinds, turbulence, and all sorts of things. And you can take part in a war that's happening on the ground below you, where the blue forces, which is you, battle the red forces. And the thing about the CPC version is you have all this colour. So you can see who the people are on the battlefield. And as a result, um, it makes it much easier to see what's going on. And there's the enemy helicopter. Can I destroy it? You don't want to get it too close, although when it does get close, it is a big wireframe graphic. I've destroyed it there. It's enormous fun and something you can play for hours. And again, it's a sandbox environment because you can fly around and do what you like. Truly one of the best simulator games on the 8-bit. But hey, what happens if you get a 16-bit? We can play Gunship 2000 on the Amiga. And this is the enhanced AGA version. And it is also running on a 28 megahertz machine. So it's going to be a bit smoother than the standard machines. But hey, frames matter when you're playing a simulator. It's just as good fun as Tomahawk. Exactly the same thing, really. You can fly around at low levels, zapping things, taking part in a war. Of course, you get all the camera angles you would expect from a 16-bit simulator. You can even follow your missiles as they head towards the thing they're going to destroy. Of course, you do benefit from a faster Amiga here. There's no doubt about it. You can play this on a standard A600 or Amiga 1200. But really, an accelerated machine gives you the best experience. Game's also available on the PC. And like Tomahawk, you can take part in a war zone and there's night flying and you can take off from a carrier fleet. If you were a fan of Tomahawk as I was in the 80s, then when you saw this thing in the 90s, this was the next big step up. You can do all those things you can't do in standard plane flight sims like fly around at low level and maneuver and shoot things because fast jets are cool but they they fly quite high up and they go very very fast and they tend to fall out of the sky at slower speeds there's lots and lots of missions to undertake and of course you can choose to fly the mission as intended or you can just mess around because again, the thing about simulator games is they are sandbox games. Target right. Target front. So we followed our mission directive and we got some targets up ahead. And you can set the enemy difficulty so they can basically be absolutely useless and miss you all the time. Or you can have it so they're pretty much accurate and will blow you up the sky with, with their first shot. Of course it has its limitations over modern simulators, but on the other hand, like Tomahawk, it's just fun because it's not overcomplicated. There's not too much going on. And some of these modern simulators, you just feel that, well, yeah, they're trying to be accurate simulators, but the fun just isn't there. It's all about the simulation, where, whereas both Tomahawk and Gunship 2000 still retain that beautiful balance between arcade game and simulator. Mr. Heli, or Mr. Hell, if you saw the original game in Japan, by Irem and converted by Firebird to the home systems, overlooked, and we look at the Amiga version here, from because of games like Blood Money. But, yeah, okay, this doesn't look as nice as Blood Money was polished, but it's a pretty good arcade helicopter game it's a shoot 'em up and you collect crystals for cash and get upgrades and the thing is all of the home systems got excellent ports of this game 
But on the 16 bits, as I say, blood money looms large for the ST and Amiga owners. And I suspect many people thought, uh, it's in, this game's inferior. But hey, here's Mr. Helly on the CPC. It's cut down, but it's just as good and just as polished as well, comparatively speaking. And it runs at a decent speed as well on all of these systems. It's, it's not a game that's super fast to begin with. So you just kind of go with the flow and the, it tends to ramp up more as the game progresses rather than just like blood money where it, it's very difficult from the start. Nice Spectrum port. Don't know if there's one to AK Music. Certainly isn't running this on my plus two. Could be the image I'm using, but there's only 48k sound. But beautifully defined graphics, or they've lost all the colour of the CPC version. And like any Japanese shoot 'em up, there are large end of level baddies. Of course. It's all good fun, and it's a really overlooked arcade shooter. There's so many games you see chosen above this when you see lists of good shoot 'em ups to play. But I think Mr. Heli on all the versions is a game that's worth a look. So that's five helicopter games across different genres that are worth a play. Desert Strike is genre defining. It's isometric, but it uses real 3D models to create some of those graphics. And it has a sandbox thing going on that its predecessor, or spiritual predecessor, Choplifter, doesn't have. That said, Choplifter is still a very enjoyable and, and busy arcade game. Lots going on, and if you are a hardcore arcade player, then that Sega Master System version is well worth playing. Tomahawk is certainly, for my money, the best simulator of any type on the 8-bit. It is really superb, and the CPC version just sits above all the other versions. Likewise, Gunship 2000 on the Amiga. Providing you've got a fairly fast Amiga to begin with, then you have a PC quality that bounces off an arcade experience with a simulator experience. And like Tomahawk, it's very enjoyable. Mr. Heli is a really overlooked Japanese shoot 'em up. I suspect even after watching this, if you're a 16-bit owner, you'll still pick Blood Money over this. But Mr. Heli is far more accessible and is generally easier to get into. Thanks for watching and join Trinity Vision next Thursday for another real hardware experience.